Hey there everyone, welcome back to the Game Vault, I'm Captain Beefy, and this is another video about Ark Survival Evolved. And we got Survival Ascended coming up, but I wanted to talk today, we're going to jump out of the BTS footage and all that, but this is still kind of a BTS video because I wanted to show you a tool that I use to manage my Nitrato server. Now, I'm not affiliated with this company or this application in any way, shape, or form. This is not paid for or an endorsement or anything like that other than a personal endorsement from me because I found this tool to be very, very useful. It's called Beacons from Omni and you can see right there and I will put in the description a link to it down below. Um, this works for the current Arc Survival Evolved uh, servers and it works from my understanding on various platforms. Like I use Nitrato, it works perfectly with Nitrato, it's great. It integrates very well with it, and I absolutely love this program. So let's cue up to music, and I'll show you what it's all about. So initially, you're going to need to link your account with Nitrato, and it's fairly easy thing to do. Boom. Um, you'll do it by importing, and what it will do is it'll ask you where it's coming from, Nitrato, game server app, single player local files, whatever, okay? Single player local files. So it looks like you can, I've never tried it on a single player game, but it would be fun to try using this on a single player game. I don't know if that would work on console, it probably wouldn't, but for PC, I'm sure it would just fine. And then you'll hit continue and it'll go through an authorization thing to get you into it, but right now I'm already linked with it. There's a lot of different stuff you can do in here. Breeding multipliers, right? So this covers everything from your mature speed to your imprint amount multiplier. And you can pick and choose and dilly-dally around with these things <clears throat> as much as possible to make the game play the way you want to game, the way you want to play it. And that's what I like about this game. I'm not here for the hardcore um, experience, the uh, official experience, it's not for me. PvP, it's not for me. I want a PvE experience. I want to get on with my buddies. I want to go out, tame stuff, have fun, and do it in a way that is not grindy to the point that it grinds me to a halt in the game. Some creatures take so long to breed up and to uh, mature and so much time between their um, you know, between the times they can breed and how often they'll produce eggs that, I mean, it could be absolutely ridiculous. So this tool enables me to not only to uh, change that to the point where it's not so crazy. And what's really nice here is when you start messing with this stuff, sometimes it can throw things out of whack down here, but you can always go back and check and see like this. If you click this, it'll show you every creature has the ability to be imprinted to 100% right which is cool it'll show you how much of an imprint they get per imprint and you can sort that from highest to lowest so most of them is a hundred percent there's a few in the 90s and all that but you know again it's set for fun one imprint you know the the thing that takes the longest in this game would be the uh um the tech gigasaurus is it giga, giga not a source is that even a thing i didn't think there was a tech one but in any case um It'll take five imprints. The mature time is 12 hours. So it does take half a day for that. So it still takes a while, but not nearly what it would take on official servers. And it does take 16 minutes between cooldowns, between mating, egg incubation takes six minutes. So as you can see, it's, wow, that's kind of crazy compared to like the regular Giga, which is two hours. You know, some of the, the, the quickest creatures to mature, let's see. 46 minutes for the Listro, Party Dodo, Dodo, yeah, so, you know, hour, <clears throat> so it still takes some time for maturity, but again, that can be adjusted up here, and it explains how it works, um, you know, if you raise a number, or if you lower a number, how it will impact your breeding and all that, so this is fantastic for anyone who wants to breed and do that kind of stuff. Crafting costs, I haven't done anything with this. Um, but as you can see, there are 
different things that you can, um, I guess, adjust the crafting cost of. That's something I haven't messed with. I don't mess with crafting costs. It's not something I want to do. Creature adjustments. You can go in here and you can choose a creature and change multipliers on it. Um, like wild damage, all that kind of stuff. Edit creature. Prevent taming it. Prevent transferring it from one server to another. There's different stuff you can do with that. Creature spawns is kind of cool because you can put creatures on different maps that don't belong there. Which is fun, but can have very unusual results sometimes. So I tried to put the Karkonos, the big crab from Aberration, on Ragnarok once. And I would do this from time to time. I would take like a week and I would say, hey, I'm going to release a creature that doesn't belong on Ragnarok here for a week. So if you want to tame it, you got to tame it this week. And, you know, um, bulb dogs one week, this and that, and the other thing. You know, just different stuff at different times. I did the Karkonos and it was bloody hilarious because it spawned in the swamp area and it overspawned. And when I say it overspawned, I mean there were probably thousands of them there. And when you started to approach the swamp, the frame rate would drop and drop and drop until it was just chugging along. And you would cross the, the mountain and look down and there was a thousand plus crabs down there. And as you got close to them, they would all start jumping. And it was just a horrifying experience because you felt like at any moment the game was gonna crash. So be warned if you use this, it can cause some craziness and some weird, unusual things to occur. Uh, custom configuration, you can download the uh, game user settings INI and the game INI and edit it right in here if you want to. You can adjust the day and night cycle as far as how many minutes it takes for each of them. As you can see, this is the default right here. I haven't messed with anything like that. Uh, this is the aberration one here. Remember how aberration has different um, lengths of time for their days and nights and so forth, so you can fix that there. Decay and spoil timers. I don't think I've messed with anything on that. Yeah. So, you know, it's all normal here, but these are things you can adjust. You can make the structures decay quicker, slower, whatever you want. You can adjust difficulty here. You know, I put it to 150, which is the max level, but you could up it to 200 if you want, but it does adjust the loot with that, which is kind of interesting. So it gives you a 500% loot scale. Um, I don't think you can f change that, can you in there? No, you can't. So yeah, that's all grayed out. But anyway, so yeah, it overrides the official difficulty, gives you a max tech level of 180, wyvern level, crystal wyvern levels, all that kind of stuff. Gives you those ideas there, which is sweet. Engram controls. So I set these for automatic unlocks, which you can do. You can prevent certain ones from unlocking. You can change when they unlock. You can do all kinds of stuff. You can allow stuff that doesn't belong on a certain map to unlock. That's up to you. You can really control the engrams here. So if you wanted to, you could create an arc that stops at the primitive level, you know? So it's kind of cool that way. Uh, the general settings has all kinds of stuff in there. And this is most of the stuff you see when you're setting up your Nitrato server on their page, you know? from max uploaded creatures, structure collisions, all that kind of stuff. I've gone through and, and customized some stuff here and there. Like I put non-permanent diseases so that if you get rabies and you respawn, you don't still have it. I don't put no diseases on there because I think it's an integral part of the game, but a permanent disease just sucks until you cure it. really sucks. Um, you can make your flyers level their speed if you want. That's something you can tick off. Um, Flyers rideable, flyers rideable in caves. You can make so flyers can ride in caves, um, which I don't have clicked. So if I had that clicked, we wouldn't have had to get the Desmodus to go to Asgard and fly around or Vanaheim or inside of caves and all that. We would just be able to take Argies and all that. So it's kind of cool, you know, that you have these options. And stamina recovering while flying means you can just um, stand up on the back of a Quetzal if you have like the uh, uh, platform saddle just hop up, stand up on him, he'll recover his stamina, and you can keep flying. Those things are horribly slow, and running out of stamina on one and being forced to land and then get back up is just, ugh, it's awful. Uh, battery consumption multipliers, just tons and tons of stuff. Stuff specific to certain stores, or certain uh, 
DLCs like the Genesis Part 2, the Hex Store. Um, you can do stuff with kicking idle players, logging uh, commands. You can uh, upgrade the fishing loot qual quality and supply crate loot quality. So that's cool. All kinds of stuff. Uh, you can enable different things. You can enable different events going on, like the Christmas event, um, Halloween, all those kind of things. So there's so much in here that you can do to customize your game. And it's kind of awesome that you have that much freedom. It's It just gives you, you know, and when I did this in the old day, before I had Beacon, I would have to go in and put the scripts in myself. I'd have to find them online and then alter them to be exactly what I needed, you know, so I'd have to, I had to learn how the scripts work a little bit and learn how to manipulate them to make them work for me. You could adjust harvest rates like you see right here. I've got basic harvest rates. I didn't change anything here, um, but you can upgrade them if you want, if you want something that you know, you're only going to be on the game for 30 days, for instance, let's say, and you wanted everybody to build up fast. You could double or triple the harvest rates, making things uh, so you gain more resources much quicker. Item stat limits, you can set um, different, like, you know, armor, all that. You can set limits on just how high the stats can go. Levels and XP, you can actually add levels to your characters and your dinosaurs. So you normally have a level cap in the game for your character, and the basic was 100, and then I think you got 15 more for ascending to the uh, uh, alpha level, I believe, if you beat... Or I, don't, I don't remember exactly how it worked, but then you got more with chibis, and you got more with this map and that map and all, so it's gone up little by little, but th with this way, you could make it almost infinite, you know, which is crazy. Loot drops. So this is cool. You can go in and... It will take every drop that's available on the island, including drops from Raptor Claws when he comes in, um, the boss fights, the artifacts, and you can alter what goes into them. So let's take a look at like, let's say when we find the artifact brood, right? We want to put it on this list. We can add item we can add stuff to it like individual things like simple firearms and that's a whole grouping of things see when you can find the the artifact as well as a simple firearm in there a piece of scuba gear or you know tech saddle whatever you can do these kind of things which is cool so i've customized i'm going to remove that one i've customized quite a bit of them and made them more lucrative but also kind of a crapshoot sometimes so you know like everything from green on up to red they get progressively better and better and you have better quality stuff that you're going to get and higher quality more end game stuff as you go up higher in the loot drops then i got the ice caves the deep sea ones and the loot crates these appear around and even beaver dams you can adjust and change things up in there i put it so you get a lot less wood from a beaver dam because so many times you open up one of those dams and if you don't take all or throw out the wood you're immobilized instantly when you clear it out because it's so heavy you know so you either have to open it up throw out the wood take all grab the rest of the stuff and get the hell out of there before the beavers eat you alive or whatever I made it a little easier by getting rid of some of that here's some project settings nothing I mess with here this just gives me the server the Viking vault and then you have a stack size uh, global stack size multiplier so I have a five for the multiplier and then for certain things I've bumped them up to 150 which uh, was I think what I can't remember where I got that number from but in any case you know I said well 150 you know I don't want to run around and open up a honey thing and have a whole bunch of honey and it all spoils at the same time it's you know it's just ridiculous it, to me it just makes things ridiculous for playing the game and again I set it up for fun. It's for PVE. I want to be able to go out, farm a bunch of honey, stick it in my refrigerator, and have a nice big stack of it. And then when I make uh, sweet vegetable cakes, I've got the honey I need for it. So, yeah, you can do that kind of stuff. Then there's stat multipliers. This is something that I haven't done but or haven't messed with because I think the stats are fine. But if you wanted to, you could go in and you can increase things per level by X amount. Like, you can't do the... So you get a base value of health by 100, but you can 
change that and I could say by two. And now every time I level up my health, I get 20 points instead of 10. So that's up to you. If I did anything in here, I would maybe add to the weight, you know, because weight really suffers as you, uh, in the game, it's really tough. But you can do that for players, for creatures. You can adjust their wild per level, you know, what they, uh, in this previews with an Allosaurus, but you can look at different creatures, you know, but you're setting it for everybody. It's just showing you the previews here. Then it shows you tamed per level, taming reward, max effectiveness reward, and it kind of gives you an idea of um, how all of this works. And you can adjust any of these things. And then mutagens for uh, late game stuff. I think this was Genesis 2, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, you can deal with how mutagens are dealt with inside the game. So there's a lot to it. A lot to it. Um, I think you can create custom blueprints. I don't think that works for um, actual consoles and all that. But in any case, this works with consoles. This works with the uh, PC as well. It's a free program, but... I spent $10 one time, it's not an annual fee or anything like that, to unlock more access to more things I can do in the game, such as um, the custom loot, which I thought that was cool. I love making custom loot boxes. I add chibis to them, I add all kinds of stuff to them, and I just make it fun. I usually add skins to them as well, so you can get all these random skins. You know, sometimes you open up a loot box. And you'll find an ascendant long neck. Next time you open it, you're gonna find a cloud mask and a chibi. You never know what you're gonna find. Yeah, so it it it's not always useful to open one up, but it's always interesting. Which to me is what makes it a lot of fun. So in any case, let me know if you've ever heard of Beacon or if you've ever tried it or if you'd consider trying it. They did state, and I've been keeping up with things that they do plan on updating it for Ark Survival Ascendant. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, they're not sure if there will be a cost involved in that at, with the new um, arc. If there is, you know, and it's another nominal cost, like 10 bucks, whatever, I will gladly pay it to have it again because it makes my life so much easier for um, server maintenance, for server maintenance and all that, and manipulating the server. I can go in real quick here, shut down the server, and change something from like Easter to Christmas, for instance, for an event. And get that server back up and it's less than you know it, the most time it takes is for the server to shut down and turn back on it takes a lot longer for all that to occur than it takes for me to actually make the adjustment and upload it which is fantastic and this will also you can make changes in this and then you can launch it and it will shut down the server it will put a message up there servers being shut down give them a 30 second notice or whatever it is server is going to be shut down for maintenance It'll make the changes, overwrite the files and all that, and then it will kick it back on after a couple minutes. You know, it needs a few minutes before it kicks it back on for whatever reason. I don't understand why, but I don't question it. It's just the way it is. So, in any case, if you found this video useful at all, please leave a like on it down below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and ring that bell for notifications. As always, I'm Captain Beefy. Thank you so much for joining me. I will see you next time. Until then, peace.